my life been impacted by being a woman in my career? Well, I'll tell you, um, a lot of positive and a lot of negative. In the beginning, when I first started as a television news photographer, um, it worked against me. I had my uh, uh, work sabotage, my equipment would be there and then I get to the shoot and it's not. Or um, I had a birth and death date of another colleague with their picture in my box to give me a message, see she came here and didn't last long either. Um, a lot of things happen. Uh, but in other ways, because there are only maybe four or five African-American females that shot TV news in, in, in network level as well when I started, um, I was a standout. Didn't have to be six foot one. <laughs> I was a standout. So um, um, I gained a lot of favor. People really were attracted to me. They liked me and, I, and where I would go, um, I had uh, a lot of privileges sometimes and maybe some of the other guys would get, would get resentful of. Um, but then again, I was nice. So who knows, maybe it's because I was a woman, or maybe because, just because I was nice. When I was a receptionist that came in radio back in the day when Camel was rocking the bay, um, the evening magazine crew came in. And I was so excited, it was a TV crew, and, and they had a little celebrity interviews. And the photographer, of course, I like to be a photographer, he got to wear blue jeans, <laughs> tennis shoes, and I was like, oh, that's live. You get to get on in history-making events, meet famous people, do exciting things, and wear jeans and tennis shoes. So I said, okay. So that kind of got me interested. And um, I got an internship at Channel 50 in Santa Rosa. And I would commute from San, Santa Rosa to San Francisco every day for $900 a month salary as a receptionist. And um, I got hired my first TV job in, in Salinas. And... Um, God, it took me a year and a half. About a year and a half, two and a half years later, I was working at uh, Channel 5 in San Francisco. What would I say to a woman that's um, interested in becoming a television news camera person as a career? Well, um, like any job, especially if you're African American or some minority, you kind of have to work twice as hard to get half, a far, half as far. That's even today. Um, but just be uh, steadfast, be diligent, know your stuff. Um, Learn on the job. Always be nice, be patient, um, and have thick skin. Because it's still, especially a job like I had, where you were, it's male dominated, um, you have to put up with a lot of stuff. Um, and sometimes you don't, pick and choose your battles. But when you do, by the time you learn what you're supposed to learn, Oh, you're going to find yourself on that stage collecting an Emmy or two <laughs> in no time. I think that if you are good in math and science, that has always been good and will always continue to be good. Be great in math and science because the engineers and all the technology and electronics and everything, that's big. It's not going to go away. Um, when I first started and I saw the computers, I thought it was going to be a fad. <laughs> joke was on me. So if you're really good and you're creative, oh my gosh, if you're like creative uh, in regards to being artistic and you have that math and science thing down, oh, that, that's, how high is that sky anyway? Mm. <laughs> Reach for it. You got it. But definitely my mom. My mom, I care for my mom now. Uh, she's almost 95 years old and she's the most incredible woman I've ever known and I think I will ever meet. She's was um, born in Alabama back uh, in 1922 and was there during the whole King marches and the, the dogs biting and the march and, and all of that. And yet she and my dad went through the military. She was a teacher for 40 years. They managed to come out to the West Coast and my sister and I both had college educations and that was of utmost importance to them. The second person I think that was most influential just happens to be my grandmother, my mom's mother. She, uh, she had 12 kids and managed to, and she was definitely from the South. So my mother was born 1922 in rural Alabama. My grandmother, 18 what? <laughs> and she was incredible. She managed to raised 12 kids, well 10, two passed away as children, nine girls and one boy. All of them were college educated, um, they were smart, uh, 
they appreciated things in life. And then they showed me that just because you look different, that doesn't mean it's a bad thing, it's a good thing. Different just means unique. Well, in honor of National Women's History Month, I um, first would like to thank you for the opportunity to bring all these wonderful stories to the front that a lot of women may have not known before. Um, something that they could grow with and think about, maybe just be right for them. Um, as it pertains to me, what I'd like to do is to tell all the women out there um, to thank yourselves for being women and dealing with so much stuff that's out there in the world and being smart enough to not let it get you down. And also, when you have the opportunity to bring home the bacon, bacon fried up in the pan and never let, you, let them forget, who a man? <laughs> Families come in all forms. Just basically learn how to do as much as you can, know about as much as you can, and just be respected, be respectable, and learn how to respect all those that came before you because there's some stories there, and hope you get enough to be a success too.